It is good to be together this morning, is it not? Yes. Wonderful. Thank you. Let us now begin worship. Friends, let us now prepare our hearts as we enter into a time of silence this morning. And as we enter into a time of silence, let us reflect on the week and how we can, in silence, confess our sins before the Lord and to also give thanks to the Lord. Amen. Friends, we also know that where the Lord is, there is grace, there is mercy, there is forgiveness and peace. And so in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, we are a forgiven people. Thanks be to God. Please join in singing number 376, Love Divine, All Love Excelling. Let us find the 
We've been assured of being forgiven, right? Amen. We have crossed that line. <laughs> Because he lives, I can face tomorrow. Because he lives, all fear is gone. Because I know he holds the future, and life is worth a living just because he lives. Amen. Well, now we have a time for news of the community, so I would like to go ahead, and you have the microphone, correct? Perfect. Well, that's a first. <laughs> Let's do that again. <laughs> Happy Sunday, everyone. My name is Yazi Williams, and I am the director of community here at First Press. And every single Sunday that we are here, I'm reminded of what a blessing it is to worship with you and to be in the Lord's presence. So we welcome you. Couple things that are exciting that are coming up. Um, Miss Alice and Bart have a crib that is in the, um, I guess like the portico here area. Well, not the portico, but as you exit, you'll see on my left, the, the North X, that's it. I had to thank you. <laughs> and that crib is collecting newborn items for unwed mothers through an amazing Christian organization. And so if you guys are shopping and you see a couple items and you wanna donate them, contact Bart and Alice, and you can just bring them into the church and place them into that sweet little crib there. Um, another update, our family and a few others here today, we gathered yesterday at Presidential Place and we volunteered with some senior residents that are living there through the help of the coordinator. We were able to serve through playing bingo and games and they just got so much joy out of hanging out with the children. And I just wanna encourage you guys to be prayerful over that particular uh, living facility. It's the one that's been put on our heart through here at the church and we plan on serving with them again. So look out in our e-letters for other opportunities to go and serve with them. They love crafts and anyone who has a musical talent, um, really anyone who's just open to socializing and hanging out with them is welcome to join us the next time that we have one of those opportunities. And the last announcement I want to make is that Children's Ministry, Wumbaland, will be taking a two-week hiatus, and we will not be here on July 2nd and July 9th. So just letting you guys know, it's not to say that the kids can't come. They'll just have to be here in the pews during the sermon. All right. Well, again, welcome. Happy Sunday. And I'll turn it back over to what? Are we doing kids' ministry? Oh, just kidding. All right. Thanks. Amen. Thank you. Master, thou callest, I gladly obey. Only direct me, and I'll find thy way. Touch me, the mission appointed for me. What is my labor, and where it shall be? Master, thou callest, and thus I reply, ready and willing, Lord, here am I. Willing, my Savior, to take up thy cross, Willing to suffer reproaches and loss. Willing to follow if thou will but lead. Only support me with grace in my need. 
Master, thou callest, and this I reply, ready and willing, Lord, here am I. Living or dying, I still would be thine, yet I am mortal while thou art divine. Pardon whenever I turn from the right, pity and bring me again to the light. Master, thou callest, and this I reply, ready and willing, Lord, here am I, where am I? Mm, Beautiful. We can all say that. Can we not? Lord, here am I. Can we not say that together? Yes, here we are this beautiful Sunday morning to worship the Lord. It is great to be together. Lord, here we are. So, friends, let us say a prayer together. Holy God, reveal to us today your word eternal, yesterday, today, and for tomorrow. And in the name of Jesus, all God's people say, Amen. Well, friends, I thank you for welcoming me to uh, Hollywood Presbyterian. It is a, it's great to be here with you. My name is Lisa Sullivan. I am a Christian educator, and I am also on the Presbyterian's pulpit supply list. So when you have uh, a need or an opportunity, I hope to come and fill those. Um, when I did receive a call, I was wrapping up VBS at Miami Shores Presbyterian Church. And it was a great experience, lots of fun. Um, it was wonderful to see the community come together for Vacation Bible School. So I'm grateful to be here. And when I said yes, I hadn't looked at the lectionary text, right? I just said, sure, I will make it happen, I will be there. And when I sat down to look at those texts, I thought, oh boy. These are hard scriptures. This is difficult. You're talking, Jesus is talking about turning, right? Turning one family member from another and carrying your cross and a sword. And I thought, oh my goodness, this is a challenge. <laughs> but a challenge that we take up together. So I know that I do not do this alone. And speaking of sword, it brought to mind when I was a student at Miami-Dade College in downtown Miami, I had decided to volunteer at the Camillus House, which now has really grown exponentially. But when I was volunteering there, it was this small little building in the middle of downtown Miami. And as a young student, I was going there. And one day I thought, you know, I'm going to take a shortcut. Has anyone here ever taken a shortcut and then it ends up being the absolute wrong decision? Yes, that is what happened. And so I took the shortcut and I ended up in what I can recall as looking like an abandoned movie set. There were concrete buildings with fences, no cars, no people, no one around, and I thought, this doesn't look right. But at the end of the block coming in my direction was a tall, little scary looking, shirtless, shoeless man carrying a machete. And here I am holding on to my little books, looking for the Camilla's house, knowing that this is not where it's located. And as the man and I 
came closer together. He was on one side of the sidewalk and I was on the other. And as he got closer, he said to me, don't worry, this is not for you. And I thought, okay, thank God, but I'm also sorry for whoever that's for because it, it was scary. It was a scary moment. So I stopped taking shortcuts to the Camilla's house and I took the, the tried and true way going forward. Which also brings me to remember that, that writer, Frederick Beekner, Christian writer who says, here is your life. Beautiful and terrible things will happen. And that is something that we are guaranteed in this life. Beautiful and terrible things will happen. So when we come across scriptures and passages that seem terrible, and they're spoken from none other than Jesus, when he says, I have come not to bring peace to the earth, but a sword, we have to take a moment and say, wait, what? We usually see pictures of Jesus with a halo, holding a lamb, right? We associate Jesus with peace and love, but who is this Jesus holding a sword? Saying he's gonna bring a sword. Saying in our passage today, in verse 37, whoever loves father or mother more than me is not worthy of me. And whoever loves son or daughter more than me is not worthy of me. And whoever does not take up the cross and follow me is not worthy of me. Those who find their life will lose it. And those who lose their life for my sake will find it. This is confounding, is it not? Would you agree? Would you agree that when I read this scripture and I thought, oh God, on Sunday morning, that's what I have to go up there and share about? How would you feel if you were in my shoes? And please, feel free. I'd love to hear from you. Right? A little nervous? I'm a little nervous about this passage. Absolutely. And then you can read back in verse 34. Do not think I have come to bring peace on the earth. I have not come to bring peace, but a sword. These are confounding, difficult passages. So first, I want to recognize that among all of us and before God. God, these are difficult passages. But as I was preparing, I found passages that were somewhat enlightening, and I would like to share those together this morning. These will not be found in your bulletin, so I will read them from my Bible. I believe you have pew Bibles, correct? Everyone have one? Okay, if you'd like to, you could turn to Psalm 62. And there I found what we believe to be a Psalm of David. And the writer writes, My soul finds rest in God alone. My salvation comes from him. He alone is my rock and my salvation. He is my fortress. I will never be shaken. And it goes on further, and the writer writes, Find rest, O oh my soul, in God alone. My hope comes from him. He alone is my rock and my salvation. He is my fortress. And again, he says, 
I will not be shaken. This is our psalmist. A little further it says, because you are my help, I sing in the shadow of your wings. My soul clings to you. Your right hand upholds me. These are the Psalms of David. And if we go back a little bit further, we hear in Deuteronomy, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. Love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your strength. And if you go back to Exodus 20, after the Israelites had been delivered from bondage and slavery, they were given the Ten Commandments. And you all know which the first one is, right? You know it. Of course you do. The first one. I am the Lord your God who brought you out of Egypt, out of the land of slavery. You shall have no other gods before me. So going back to Matthew's text, is it so hard for us to really be confounded and shocked by what Jesus is saying? Is it? It is if we believe that the Old Testament is no longer relevant to Christianity, which I do know some people have adopted that belief. But I can assure you that the New Testament does not make sense without the Old Testament. Now, the Old Testament is self-contained. It does not need the New Testament, right? Those Hebrew texts are self-contained. But to try to figure out the New Testament without reading the Old Testament is a puzzle that will never be solved rightly. If you want to solve it rightly, if we want to understand it in its greater text, which I think is what Jesus is calling all of us to do in our lives, yes, <laughs> we do have trouble. We do have complications. We do get confused. And we may not get all the answers when we want those answers. I know that happens to me quite often. But I get a bigger, better picture when I look into the Old Testament for help. I looked for help in these passages because they were and they are hard text. So Matthew, Matthew's passage, again, talks about Jesus. It talks about how he will turn. And we knew that at this time already in the Old Testament, I'm sorry, in the New Testament, that the world as we sing was about to turn, right? They didn't all know it at this time. There was this itinerant rabbi. Where did this guy come from? And by what authority was he teaching, right? Those were the questions. By what authority are you doing these things, Jesus? But Hindsight tells us that the world was about to turn. And they really didn't perceive it. They really didn't understand. And I know sometimes we look at the disciples and we, we even laugh like, oh God, here they go again. They don't get it. But is that fair to them? What would you say? I, I'm asking you. Is it fair that we do that? We laugh or we put our hand on our hip like, I wouldn't have done that. Really? Yes. I think that we have hindsight in our favor when it comes to looking at the context of these passages. And Jesus, we know, or John the Baptist, preached what? What was his word? Remember? Repent. 
right? Which means turn, turn around, people. Yes, that's what he was preaching. Jesus, too, he said, repent, the kingdom of heaven is near. The world was about to turn. Jesus was about to do something that no one in the history of humankind has ever done. And amazingly, it was done for each and every one of us right here. Today, in this place. And also looking back in the Old Testament passages, if you look, there are many. Joshua, Numbers, Ezekiel, Deuteronomy, that speaks of our Lord with a sword. So as much as I want to believe that Jesus is holding a lamb and gentle and kind, which we know he is, right? And there are other texts that show that Jesus does wish peace, right? And Jesus or other uh, writers of the New Testament speak of the message of reconciliation. We do know that there are still tensions and conflicts which may not be resolved in these passages until they're fulfilled, right? Until they are fulfilled. And if we think about it too, we know that Jesus, when his disciples, or I'm sorry, his family came to get him and he was healing a paralytic and they said to him, your mother and your brothers are outside looking for you. What happened? Does anyone remember? Do you remember? He said, his family said, he's out of his mind, right? But what did he say? The people that were with him, working and serving and healing and teaching and praying, he said, these are my brothers and sisters and mother and father. That's so profound. You and I, we are Jesus' sisters and brothers doing the work that Jesus has called us to do today. And that work can look differently for every single one of us. Because Jesus has called you to a specific task, me to a specific task. So we won't be all doing the exact same work, granted. And it's also Jesus in Mark chapter 10 also. Remember when he reads, uh, meets the rich man? The rich man has it all. He could be a Bill Gates, Elon Musk, uh, you know, whoever, Mark Zuckerberg, great wealth, great wealth. And Jesus says simply, sure, go and sell all your possessions, then come follow me. That, that was, was not that confusing also for the wealthy man, would you say? Would you agree? How would that wealthy man have felt? Confused? <laughs> Wait, What? Why? Why? Anyone want to take a guess? Why? Because we rely on our things. Because we rely on our wealth. Because sometimes I say, God, please just let me win the lottery. Please. And uh, I never win. <laughs> I haven't ever won. I think once I won $2. Okay. Thank you, God. Not exactly what I was thinking. <laughs> so, friends, all of this is to say that God and Jesus and the Holy Spirit are worthy of our loyalties, allegiances, 
love, respect, time, gifts, talents, skills, things that we have that can be lifted up to the Lord for God. And Mark, turning the rich way, turning the rich man away, or he turning away, I want to believe that he went home and he thought about it. And maybe he, he sold one thing that next day, some stocks, right? Or maybe he sold this farm that he owned, and he began to see the value of the message of God in our lives. And lastly, of course, Jesus, on the heels of that experience, says, Truly I tell you, no one who has left home, brothers, sisters, mother, father, child, or fields for me and the gospel will not fail to receive a hundred times as much. So yes, things have to be put into their proper place. But Jesus says we're going to receive a hundred times more brothers, sisters, family, mothers, fathers. And he also adds, of course, that there'll be persecutions. So as you know, Jesus has promised us trouble in this life. But he says, take heart, I have overcome the world. So is Jesus not worthy of our affections, right? Of our allegiance, of our prayers, of our faith? Yes, absolutely. In Hebrews, the word of God, the word of God is described as a sword right? Sharper than any double-edged sword, dividing soul and spirit, joints and marrow. That's, pre that's precision. And the Word can do that for us. Anyone want to acknowledge that there is a also spiritual warfare that goes on in our lives, that unseen things can be count working against us in this life. Does anyone believe that? If you do, please raise your hand. I know I do. I mean, sometimes I feel when I'm trying to do some, something, it's like everything from the left and the right and behind and in front of me is trying to, to, to stop it. And sometimes, I. Not everything is going to work out, right? And that's okay. But we have to be aware of these things going on in our lives. It isn't just some accident, maybe. There perhaps can be forces in spiritual warfare in this world that work against us. And I don't mean just us here today in the pews. I mean in big ways, right? Maybe our country, correct? Maybe the world. So these are important things not to let slip out of our minds. And to close, lastly, as I was preparing to meet you today and be with you today, another passage came to mind. And again, to me, this feels like the Holy Spirit helping me because, as you know, I was kind of wrapping up some VBS things, and it was quite a hectic time. But this passage came to mind, again, when I was thinking about Jesus and a sword. <sighs> this is in Revelation chapter 19, which I know most of us don't read Revelation because it's way out there, right? It's way out there. But here the writer, which we believe to be John, I saw heaven standing open, and there before me was a white horse whose rider is called Faithful and True. With justice, he judges and makes war. 
His eyes are like blazing fire, and on his head are many crowns. He has a name written on him that no one knows but he himself. He is dressed in a robe dipped in blood, and his name is the Word of God. I will allow you at your leisure to read the rest of the text of Revelation 19. But the sword is present. So let us not look over this passage too quickly. Let us not try to say, oh God, I'm not going to preach on that text. I'm just going to pick a psalm and we're going to make it really nice and we're going to have a great Sunday. Let's not do that. Let's dig in and see when we are confused about something, looking a little further into it, does it line up? Does it line up with the Old Testament? Does it line up with the New Testament? Does it line up with our church confessions, right, that are written over thousands of years by people who have spent their lives reading this? Yes. So friends... There's a saying, do not avert your eyes. Don't look away. And that is something that I am tempted myself to do, so I am here speaking to me as well, which I almost did today with these texts. But I didn't, and here we are. And I hope that we are encouraged today to know that God is worthy of our affections, God is worthy of our love, of being number one in our hearts and our lives. Why? Why? Does anyone want to answer that? I have a feeling you know. Anyone? Take a guess. Why? I know you know. Someone take a guess. Why? Why does God deserve that allegiance, that place? We're forgiven, absolutely. And how did that happen? Because we're loved. Through the sacrifice of Jesus Christ, who overcame the world, defeated death. Is anyone here really going to die? Sure, your body's going to start breaking down at some point. It can't go on forever. But Jesus says, you will never die. It's pretty profound. So I am grateful to God because God has definitely forgiven, shown love, Given me a life I really don't even deserve. Given me mercy and grace. And I am thankful to the Lord. And friends, I hope that we will all remember how much we are loved by God. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Okay, well, here we are, and I would like to change this up a little bit for today. I hope that's okay. We've arrived in the bulletin at the Lord's Prayer, but before we do that, I want to jump down to offering of prayer, and then next to that it says prayers of the people. So I would like to ask that instead of reading a corporate prayer, which would be on behalf of all of us, I ask that now we have an opportunity to share our prayers for you to speak, for you to hear one another's prayers so that you can be praying for one another. And it can be anything. 
prayer of intercession, prayer for a neighbor, a family member, prayer for the world, prayer for our veterans, prayer for unwed mothers. It could be anyone. Um, so please, let us now open the time up to hear from one another. What are your prayers? And please don't be shy. I'm one of those people that I love to hear from you. And I ask to go ahead and hear from one another. Your friend Nikki's health. Thank you. Bianca's sister. Thank you, Kennedy and his family. The world in crisis. Yes, Ukraine. Sudan. One of your members is in Argentina? She is Argentinian, okay. Mr. Sergey, I didn't hear that. Louder. Mr. Sergey, you said. Minister, okay. Sorry about that. My hearing. Addictions. Your son's addictions. Absolutely. Thank you. Any others? I can feel them. I just can't hear them yet. What's that? Your parents, yes. Lord knows we need to pray for parents. Any other prayers? People suffering with anxiety and depression. Yes, absolutely. People suffering from anxiety and depression. Yes, thank you. Okay, friends, we will pray together and then we will conclude with the Lord's Prayer. Let us pray. O Holy One who teaches us that the world is about to turn, we thank you, God, for bringing each and every one of us here together today to worship you and to remember that you love us and to recall all that you have done for us. And Lord, to give you praise. And now, God, we ask for you to hear those prayers, the spoken and the unspoken prayers. Bianca, Nikki, Kennedy and his family. And Lord, we pray for Minister Sergey. And God, we pray for those that are battling addictions. We pray for those that are suffering under depression and anxiety. We pray for countries that are experiencing terrible crisis and wars, Sudan, Ukraine. Lord, the world, as you know, is in crisis. And God, we pray for parents we recall their love and sacrifice. And Lord, we know that, that not all parents were able to parent. And so we ask you to heal those places in us 
and help us to remember that you are the greatest parent as we even learn to reparent ourselves. And God, we just thank you for this time to bring everything to you and lay it at your feet and to know that you are worthy and that you hear us and that all things work for the good of those who love you. And we now remember the prayer that your son taught us to pray by saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. And so, friends, uh, now in our bulletin, we have an opportunity to give back to God uh, a portion of what God has given to us, whether that be our time, our talent, our finances. So let us have an offering to the Lord. Let us pray. God, we give you thanks for the tithes and offerings that have been given to you, Lord, for your work in this world. And Lord, take those offerings and may they be blessed and multiplied. In the name of Jesus, all God's people say, amen. Amen. Well, we are at our final hymn. Let us sing, friends. Oh. 
now, friends, please receive the benediction. Pardon me? Oh, okay. <laughs> okay. So, the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord turn his face toward you and give you peace. Go in the love and the peace of God and in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Thank you.